Hi everyone, welcome back. It's Blake again with Northwinds Wilderness School. Um, I was thinking a lot in the last couple days about a conversation that I had with Ricardo Sierra, I don't know, five-ish years ago. Um, he said one of the most important things in building a clientele, in being a teacher, sorry about the car, and being in the wilderness industry, being a teacher and helping people establish their own journey is creating a relationship. And it occurred to me that through these videos we've been making, I've shared a lot of information with you, but you don't really know me. You don't really know anything about me. So I think what I want to do is just kind of try to tell you a couple of stories. Um, I'm not going to give you like a timeline of my life. I'm not going to try to lay out everything I've done, every accomplishment that I've made. But what I will do is just share a couple of stories uh, from my life with you. And I've been thinking about this a lot. And I think the first story I wanted to, I want to tell you took place in the summer of 2003. Um, my dad and I spent the entire summer living in the woods of central Minnesota um, near Mille Lacs Lake. Not completely primitive, not completely natural, but really close to completely primitive and completely natural. You know, we built several different types of shelters trying to figure out what was good for long term. And we learned a lot about what's good for short term, but very little about what's good for long term. Um, you know, we did some hunting, we did some fishing, we did some foraging, we ate a lot of wild foods. But one day, we were sleeping in this lean-to that we had made. We'd put a ton of work into this lean-to. It was probably five or six feet high at the front, maybe eight feet deep. And in the back, we had kept it maybe a foot or two off the ground. We had built a wall across the back of sharpened sticks pounded into the ground to create a barrier for um, wildlife. We had built sides on this lean-to. We had a reflector for the fire. It was basically the perfect lean-to. But lean-tos don't help at all with mosquitoes. And I think anyone who tries to tell you that mosquitoes are not an issue in wilderness survival has never spent any time outside. We decided we wanted to try to build a more permanent shelter. And we were sort of using the idea of a wigwam as our basis. Um, we used a bunch of saplings. Um, we left a few in the ground. We bent the tops down and tied them together. And then we cut down a few saplings and sharpened the heavy end, planted it into the ground, bent the top down, created a dome. And then we tied some rails around the sides to create this like dome structure with a door on one side. And we wanted to cover it with bark, but we didn't want to kill any trees um, to do it. So, one day I was just out scouting the property. We were on 80 or 100 acres, something like that. I don't remember, it was a long time ago. Um, and I found a couple of dead birch trees. And I don't know if you've ever worked with birch bark that comes off of dead trees, but it's not the most convenient thing in the world. It's kind of a pain in the butt. But like I said, we didn't want to kill any trees. So I pushed one over, it fell over, no problem. I got all the bark off of it. I cut the bark into three or four foot sections, carried it back to camp, tied them onto the shelter and it worked great. It took some finagling, but once we figured out how to get the pieces flat and attach them to the shelter as bark shingles, they worked pretty well. So I went back to get the other tree and I pushed on it and it didn't fall over. This tree was probably 30 feet tall the top was broken off. It was probably close to two feet in diameter at the base. 
and it was not as rotten as I had thought, but it was rotten enough that I believed I could push this tree over. I really, really believed that I could do it. So I pushed harder and the tree started to rock and the top started to rock paradoxically to the bottom. And I felt like there was a decent chance the top of this tree was gonna fall off and land on me. And I was not psyched about that idea. But I, I decided to give it one more shove and just see what happened. If the tree fell over, awesome. If not, I was gonna leave it alone because I did not want this tree falling on my head. So I gave it everything I had, I pushed, and this tree came toppling down. It hit the ground with a crash. Debris and leaves flew up everywhere. And I noticed these little pink things crawling everywhere. I had no idea what they were. They were maybe an inch or two long and pink and just like scurrying around. I took a step closer to this tree because I wanted to get a closer look at what these little pink things were. And something hit me in the back. It, not like a baseball bat, but like a stake. Like something hit me in the back hard and I felt weight on the shirt that I was wearing. And something climbed up to my shoulder and jumped and glided through the air to a tree. It climbed up about 20 feet into the tree and jumped and flew right towards me and landed on my chest. And when this happened, I realized that it was a flying squirrel. It climbed down my chest, around my leg, down my pant leg, up the nearest tree and dive bombed me again. This squirrel climbed a tree, jumped, dive bombed me. It would climb up my back, down my front, around my torso for, I don't know, I want to say 10 minutes, so probably two minutes. But it was freaking me out, but it was also really cool. And I stood really, really still to see how long this would last because having this really close contact with such a cool wild animal was really exciting to me. And I slowly started to realize that what had happened is it had a nest in this rotten birch tree and it had had babies in there. And when I knocked the tree down, the babies came spilling out and this thing was doing the best it could to scare me. A creature who's 200 times bigger than this little thing was trying to scare me away to give its babies time to escape, to keep a safe distance between me who had just destroyed their home and the babies that she now so desperately wanted to protect. So after a couple minutes of this like remarkable experience, I turned around and I started to slowly walk away. And she ran between my legs, climbed up my pant leg, up to my shoulder, stopped on my shoulder, and then jumped and flew away. And that was the end of it. That was the end of the experience. And I remember so vividly the weight of her sitting on my shoulders and the push as she jumped and glided off of my shoulder. It was, you know, we're talking 15 years ago this happened and remains to this day one of the most remarkable experiences of my life. I don't think very many people get to have that kind of an intimate interaction with a wild animal. And even though the reason this interaction happened was because I had destroyed its home, potentially killed some of its babies, potentially killed its mate, and I do still feel bad for, about it. I'm so grateful that I got to have such a cool experience. And honestly, now, 15 years later, I still won't push over rotten birch trees because if there's not a flying squirrel in there, it might be a chipmunk or a pine marten. It might be baby raccoons or an owl. And I don't want to be responsible for the destruction of that habitat unless I really need it. I mean, if it's a matter of life and death, I'll knock down a dead tree, but I'm not gonna do it just for, to play around or anything because those creatures deserve to have a home as much as I do or as much as my dad does or whatever. And that experience has really stuck with me through the years. It's not the only really cool wildlife experience I've had, but it's, it's the one that I felt I wanted to share with you first. So I guess uh, I'm not going to keep you too long. 
thank you for taking this moment to listen to me talk. Uh, have a great day. I'll talk to you all next time.